Hey everyone, welcome back to the Wimpy Studio. Today, I'm going to be recapping and reviewing Fuller House Season 5, Episode 18. It is called Our Very Last Show Again. This is the series finale of Fuller House. Very, very sad. So let's go ahead and get into the episode. Uh, before we begin, just a couple of quick announcements to make. First of all, I am trying to reach 100 subscribers by the end of July, which is just a little bit over a month because today is the last day of June. So I'm really, really hoping if you enjoy the videos that I do that you can uh, uh, subscribe because I'll be doing a lot of content coming up. Um, I'm going to be reviewing The Babysitter's Club, which is a Netflix series that is based on a bunch of books. But So that will be I will be doing reviews on every episode of those, and those will be starting uh, next week, next Tuesday. So I'm really excited for that. On Thursday, I have a fun Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone video coming. And Saturday, I have a special 4th of July about Riverdale. Let's go ahead and get into the Fuller House review. So I have a lot to talk about in this video. I'm going to try to keep it pretty short, but I'm probably going to rant about it a lot. So, um, first of all, this is the episode that we've all been waiting for. The couples finally tied the knot. And... I know that we've been waiting for this moment all along, and we did not know which episode it was going to be, honestly, because, I mean, there was a lot of different episodes, I mean, there's two episodes that we could, that we could choose from, and maybe another one, but, like, I guess it's fine that it was the series finale, I was kind of expecting it to be that, three winnings and a musical episode, uh, in episode 11, but that turned out to be the whole, um, that turned out to be the whole other thing, like Jackson and Ramona were doing a musical, and they were at the wedding expo. But it would have been cool if there was three weddings and a mus if there was a musical at the wedding, that would have been awesome. But you know, I really like this wedding mainly because uh, I feel like and Fuller House has a thing of like I feel like they're overpowering like funness. For instance, like for that two week anniversary thing, Steve set up a um a like a obstacle course for DJ to run in and it almost felt like it was like too exciting to actually feel romantic this wedding felt romantic and I really liked that. I mean there was some fun like Joey McIntyre initiating the wedding but overall it was really fun I'm just kind of glad that they didn't do it like a full-out fun zone I'm just glad that they um because I feel like the Neelywood episode did that. I'm glad that they just it had got to be romantic I liked how they find they show DJ and Danny Stephanie and uh Jesse and Kimmy and Joey dancing. It would be, I I really like that because those are like the people I've been saying all along that like they fit into the spots. DJ fits into being the mom when her husband passed away, just like Danny did it with his wife, Pamela. Stephanie is the sister. In this case, it would be Danny because Danny and Jesse are brother in laws. Just the sister who I don't know. I guess it's pretty. She likes like being attractive, is the right way to say it, which definitely fits in with both of them. And then um. Kimmy and Joey are the funny ones, so overall, it's like, I'm glad that they were able to match it up for the wedding and to for who they danced with, it was overall very good choices, and the wedding was beautiful, and in a second, after I talk about my thoughts about the episode, I'm going to be talking about uh, the guest list and all the um, guest stars that arrived, because there's a lot of them, I'm going to kind of be talking about, did I expect them, do you think that they fit in the storyline? So I will be talking about that uh, in, in a little bit. So overall, it was a very, very beautiful ceremony, and if I kind of we kind of had this wedding in mind. It was going to take place in the backyard. It was just going to be very, very romantic, and it was. I feel like it's just we've waited so long, and for Kimmy and Fernando less because and Stephanie and Jimmy, but we've waited so long for DJ and Steve, for instance. We've waited since like 1992 or whenever their relationship started. And now we finally get it in 2000. So it's like, it's been a while. And I'm glad that they finally got to do it. Because if Fuller House was like canceled after season four, like that would have been such a letdown because we never got to see the wedding. And plus like, well, while I would say that this episode, and I'll talk about that this in a bit. While I would say that this episode um, definitely left a couple of things open. It wrapped things up pretty good. And overall, it was very, very happy. Um, So... Uh, moving aside from the um, wedding, let's talk about the kids' little subplot. So, pretty much, Lola and Popko come back, which is awesome. I'm really glad that they uh, came back. And um, Jackson and Ramona realized they forgot to introduce Rocky and Ethan to their exes. And do, do I, And maybe people have been talking about this. Does Jackson still have feelings for Lola? No, I don't think so. I think that he's fully committed himself to Rocky. But if you compare Lola and Rocky side by side... Rocky is, like, this very, very, like, 
has this like attitude and she's like so like different you know like she's not a good influence on jackson was but overall she turns out to be very sweet and even though she's like they're like golf style it is was very um i feel like it's an interesting dynamic between the two of them because jackson's such this innocent kid you know so i feel like and then lola is just looks like this sweet girl a little bit awkward but i feel like she's the girlfriend you would want to have while rocky is kind of like the one you would stay away from but jackson was drawn to her uh because of like circumstances so i feel like jackson was like really 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 wanted to impress lola but with rocky it was a different story because he felt just different towards her if he felt like he had to prove her something because of how different she was like she had she he had to prove something in her well with lola you know she's like pretty she'll like allow it you know she'll like go she'll be like jackson like it's fine i like you you know i feel like i feel like i definitely like that um, just the difference. And with Ethan, he's, like, a very, very, very polite man, and he's a good man for Ramona. Popko is, like, this really big troublemaker, but I feel like he, we thought that he, uh, was good at the end of season two and Ramona kissed him, but then he turned out to be exactly like he was, but they did become friends at the end of season four. So I think that they brought all these guest stars back and I'm glad that they actually did a storyline with them, but I think that they've definitely moved on, but they realized something that, like, they have to you know, overcome their exes at some point. So I'm glad that they were able to do this storyline, you know? So yeah, that's my thoughts on that storyline. You can comment down below what you thought of it because there is a big difference between, um, there's a big difference between like Ethan and Popko and, um, Lola and Rocky. I, I'm just glad that they, um, introduced that difference because if they did not introduce that difference, it, if they didn't introduce this, I felt like there would be something missing, especially for them to not bring the other people back. Anyway, so let's talk about the ending. So last episode um, was the episode where we got some bad news. Uh, Stephanie, Danny, and Jimmy, and Kimmy, jo uh, Kimmy uh, Fernando, and Ramona are moving. Kimmy, Fernando, and Ramona are moving to a new sandwich location. I'm not sure where, but Stephanie, Danny, and Jimmy are, are will be in town, but they're just moving to a different house because Jimmy's officially going to be taking over the old sandwich shop while Fernando moves to another sandwich shop somewhere else for Uncle Monty's. So um, I really liked how everyone got to stay, and it's like everyone left, and then, of course, the girls walked back in. We could kind of see, and everyone gets to stay, stay. And it, overall, it was a very, very happy, but the most shocking moment is Stephanie's pregnant. And, okay, I have to talk about this for a second. While it was a very, very happy and emotional ending, I teared up a little bit when it ended and she revealed that. It was a, it just didn't make that much sense, and I was disappointed that it ended off like that. Like, what could have happened? And I'll actually talk about this at the very, very end when I talk about if there was a season six and what Candace Cameron Bure's, Bure said. But, like, Stephanie couldn't have children. That's why Kimmy had the baby for her. It just felt really, really weird, like, the ending result. I was really, really confused. Comment down below if you were confused along with me. But, like, that ending, although it was really, really happy and emotional, it just, I, Stephanie can't have children. So I just thought that that was a little bit weird how just the ending of it, like, really was. I mean, it, overall, I really did, um, really did in, enjoy it. But it was just, the ending result was, like, a little bit weird. But it was overall, I loved it. Okay, so I do have a little bonus topic to talk about. So CJ and Rose were there, and I think that they were both confirmed for this episode. I'm disappointed that we did not get to see more of Max and Rose because we haven't seen them at all. And Max is like has been like, instead Max gets these weird storylines. I like Max and Rose together. That's a little fun kid relationship. But without Rose, Max just has a big attitude, and he's just like really grumpy and like that school thing. Like he becoming a middle schooler. If Rose was there, things would have been totally different. But, like, we have not... This is the first time we've seen Rose all season. Last season, they had a fight, and they brought CJ back. But CJ was too involved in their drama. I mean, it's been since season three where they've actually had a storyline all to themselves that did not involve CJ. So I'm glad that they finally did that. And you know what would have been really funny? If Steve was talking to Jackson and Ramon about exes because he did all the thing. And he's like, welcome to Riverdale, which, speaking of Riverdale, this Saturday, stay tuned, 4th of July special, Riverdale. Um, it would have been funny if CJ walked in because I would have been like, yes, because I, I'm, what I was disappointed about is that we did not get to see, see a Steve and CJ interaction uh, about the wedding. I think maybe, I'm sure they did something about it, 
But I'm disappointed because DJ and Matt, we got to see that. But even like a quick scene, like maybe like at the in season four, you know, and of course Steve was absent from that episode. They did it on purpose so to actually focus on DJ and CJ. But I really wanted an interaction between Steve and CJ because we haven't seen them together since he called it the wedding in that episode. So I was really surprised. And do I? And I don't know. I was just really con. It was. I, I, it would have been really cool if that happened. It would have made a lot more sense. It would have been a lot more fun. But I, I understand why they didn't because they're not gonna bring back something like this and have an argument in a wedding episode where Steve is getting married. But Rose did say, "I'm coming to see if Stephen can say I do." It's kind of hard for him, and that did make me laugh. I was glad they were able to give him mention because you know Steve couldn't say I do to CJ, and um, and that's why he called it the wedding because he loved DJ. So. Anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to a special segment of my thing, and that is the guest list. Sorry I cut off a little bit down there, but I'll talk about that in a second because that's the most important part. So a lot of people were there, unexpected people, but fun. So I'm going to kind of be going through each of them and saying we're I expecting for them to be there or not. So let's start with Vicki Larson. So it was a fun appearance. I was not expecting it, but it was still nice to bring her back. She was in the season three finale, and overall, that was a lot of fun. Her and Danny reunited, and there was the question, um, it, will her and Danny get back together? And no, um, they did not. They didn't even mention Vicky in season four, and now in season five, they do have a very, very brief 30-second conversation, and I'm almost like, well, what's going to happen there, you know? I, I don't, I really don't know what's going to happen, so, um... What would have happened if, like, of course, the show, like, still kept her there? It was kind of confusing, I would definitely say. But, um, overall, I thought it was really, really nice to bring Vicky Larson back. My favorite relationship with Danny in it. Let's talk about Derek Boyd. So, Michelle's childhood friend came back for a little audition for initiating the ceremony. It was kind of random, I gotta say, because Michelle wasn't in this episode. I'll talk about that later. Why would they bring Michelle's best friend back, childhood friend back? If they're not bringing him a law, if they're not bringing her along with it, it was just kind of random. It was fun, just a little bit random. And I, I didn't, I was disappointed how they didn't even mention like Michelle couldn't be here or even like say like she sent a card. I really did like that. I mean, last episode we got a little reference, but I really would have really liked that. It only takes like a minute maybe to add that in because the episode, a lot of people are saying, I think it's going to be an hour. I think the episode's going to be an hour to an hour and a half. It turned out to be um, 30 to 30, 35 minutes, which I was I thought was really short. And to be honest, um, uh, the uh, there's a couple episodes. I think that the premiere, it was the second longest episode. The premiere was like a minute longer, but I was disappointed. Like, I thought it was going to be like a lot longer. It could have easily been a little bit longer. Now, obviously, I think now it was the perfect length, but... I'm sure a lot of people were disappointed when they found out it was only 35 minutes, a little bit over a typical episode of Fuller House. Now, I don't know. But th I just didn't notice that. So let's talk about Dwayne. Uh, Dwayne, his ex came back, which was very surprising, and so did Viper. Um, DJ's ex came back. And those were... They were, like, there, but they just were so... They're so extra, you know? They're so extra. They, I mean, I, I thought Dwayne's little whatever was cute, but... Viper, like, didn't even have a line. He was just saw in the background. He was talking to CJ. And I'm like, is that going to be something? Viper and CJ? Because that would be interesting, all right? DJ's ex dating her husband's ex. That, that's an inter really interesting dynamic. I mean, so DJ's ex dating... Uh, wait, DJ's husband's ex dating her ex that just a really really weird complicated love story uh i'm not really gonna even go into it um so those were very very surprising appearances i gotta say okay so then harry takia takiyama which was a fun appearance he I mean, didn't get a speaking role but i'm glad that they brought back these appearances now that one didn't make more sense because it was a childhood friend and but the ex is bringing them back was just it was really extra because like why, why would the exes show up at the wedding it just felt really, really weird to me and extra and the whole thing. But it was cool, cool bringing Harry Tak Takayama back, and he was in that one episode in season one with like the um the roses thing. So I really did enjoy that they brought him back for that. But I also thought it was cool how they brought him back in this episode for like you know the finale. I'm glad that they really brought all these people back. But so Candace Cameron's mom was there. I did not notice her, but it was cool that we got to see her. Um, 
So yeah, that was a fun appearance. I really did not notice that, but cool. And then Joey McIntyre, which was my favorite appearance. And they were hinting at this in episode 16, the nearly wood game. And Fernando had a big grudge against Joey McIntyre. And I loved when uh, at the wedding, Fernando was like, Joey McIntyre. It, I really liked that they introduced that little grudge because Fernando being like, I'm not going to like my for my wife's former crush. And to be honest, I DJ and Steve's is definitely the most romantic Followed by Jimmy and Stephanie. I th feel like Kimmy and Fernando, just because, like, we've seen them. I mean, they've gone through so much. But also because they're a fuller house relationship. Stephanie and Jimmy are, too. But DJ and Steve is the only full house relationship. So, also, Michelle didn't show up. But we weren't expecting that. We weren't expecting that she would show up, you know? So, um, I guess we were expecting it. I wrote that down wrong. But, overall, it was sad, but... Okay, so let's talk about some episode awards. So, my favorite moment was the beautiful ceremony. I think that everyone really was glad. And the fact that it took place in the backyard was kind of strange, I guess is what I would say. I was kind of confused. But overall, it definitely adds some Full House vibe. But um, I feel like, well, in Heartland, when Amy and Ty got married, it took place in the house, which was very, very nice. I feel like they do, like, the most interesting locations, and the wedding turns out to be very, very uh, special because I feel like just doing it in a random church just doesn't feel special. I mean, it's fine, but like, um, I don't know. And I'm glad because this is the first wedding that we've actually gotten to, well, no, besides Jesse and Becky's, but this is the first wedding that we've actually, the next, the second wedding that we've seen in the franchise, but the first one on Fuller House. I mean, we saw Kimmy and Fernando's almost wedding in the season finale of, in the finale of season one, but that wasn't really. That wasn't, like, really that, you know? So, my favorite characters ever was everyone there. I thought that everyone did a spectacular job f pulling off the series finale. The perfect series finale. Acting was good by everyone. Even people who I wasn't a big fan of, like, that show, like, CJ and Viper. And I mean, I like Viper. I feel like he was a little bit better than Nelson. Just a little bit in the original series. But his bad boy appearance and him breaking up with DJ for no reason... I, that's, he scored low points for me. But I liked how DJ was so used to being with, like, very, very faithful and loyal guys. And, um, Viper was just something different. I thought it was an interesting dynamic. My most shocking moment was all the guest stars that arrived, like Viper and Joey McIntyre and Derek. And I was not expecting those appearances, but they were a lot of fun. So my overall grade is an A. Plus, 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 plus. My favorite episode by far of all of Fuller House does not beat some Full House episodes, so i got to say. Anyways, so, a little special segment. So, I want to talk about if there was a Season 6. So, we did get some news recently. So, Candace Cameron Bure said that there was there were six seasons planned, and it would focus on Stephanie being a mother. She was disappointed that Season 5 didn't touch on that storyline. I wish there was a Season 6, but it was also a good place to end the Loving franchise off. So, there was a Season 6 planned. There was a season nine of Full House planned in the original thing, but they decided not to do it. So I guess it was, this was the same thing. And it would focus on Stephanie being a mother, which, uh, yeah. So she was disappointed that season five did not touch on that storyline, which, to be honest, I was disappointed, too. I mean, they brought her back. Um, there was, like, a couple things. Like, she, like, Stephanie was so busy, but we never really got to see. And she wrote a song for her. But we really didn't just get to see, like, the full raising a child thing not like we did on full house because full house was like the best that we got to see all three of them like we only got to see like stephanie actually interacting with her kid i would have loved to see everyone doing it you know and i was just disappointed that she hardly made any appearances the only appearance that she even made was um the only appearance that she ever even made was in that thanksgiving episode and i was just disappointed there wasn't more of her and like we got to see stephanie I guess, raising it, but then we found out that she was pregnant at the end, which, again, did not make any sense, and it really just confused me overall, but again, I, I do wish there was a season six. I feel like with every show, unless this is a show we really hate, we won another season, even though we don't get it, and I felt like it was a good place to end the fr loving franchise off, and I feel like season six would definitely focus on Stephanie and her new pregnancy and raising a child. It would have been very fun, because I think it would definitely be Stephanie-focused. But I was glad that they ended it off because I'm sure people had had mixed feelings because Stephanie's not everyone's favorite character, which is fine. I mean, she's not my, I mean, she's not my favorite character, but she's up there because she's like the core three in the thing. So, 
Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the possibilities of a full list house. To be honest, I feel like everyone's like, ooh, there should be a full list house, there should be a full list house. But when you think about it, do you really want there to be a full list house? Like, there doesn't have to be. Everyone's like, ooh, there has to be one, there has to be one. And I feel like Jackson, Max, Ramona, and Tommy, and what they're going to do, if they did do a full list house, I would be very upset if they brought in, um, a very, very upset if they brought in, uh, if they just took Tommy away because he wasn't a big role in the original series. I would be really upset with that, but maybe there will be one, maybe there won't. They've talked about, like, doing something about it again, but I'm really not sure. Anyways, I want to thank everyone for watching Olympic Studio. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on your post notifications so you never miss an upload. I hope you guys have appreciated my Fuller House reviews. So, so sad it's over, but I'm hoping that there will be some good news in the future about it. Um, so, yeah. Um, please, 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 please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Anyways, thanks everyone for watching Olympic Studio. Stay tuned for more videos to come, and bye.